Listen and speak. Unit one. Meeting people. Exercise one. Introducing yourself. Part A. Listen to people introduce themselves. Listen at least three times. Hello, I'm Jason. Hi, my name's Dolma. Nice to meet you, Dolma. Good to meet you too. Excuse me, I don't think we've met before. My name's Mary Jensen. Oh, hello, I'm Bigash Chetri. Good to meet you, Mr. Chetri. Pleased to meet you too, Miss Jensen. Hello, can I sit here? Yes. By the way, I'm Robin. Hi, my name's Jessica. Nice to meet you. Pleased to meet you too. And where are you from, Robin? I'm from Kathmandu. What about you? I'm from New York. Oh, this is my stop. Bye, Robin. Bye. See you. Unit one, exercise two, meeting someone you know. Part A. Listen to friends talking when they meet. Listen at least twice. Hi, Sabud. How are you today? Not bad, thanks. How about you? Great, thanks. So where are you heading? To college as usual. I'm already late. See you later, Sabud. Take care. Bye bye. Hi. How have you been? Fine, thanks. And you? Pretty good. How's the family? Just fine. And how's work? Good. Very busy. Yeah, me too. Well, talk to you later. Yeah. Nice talking to you. Bye. Bye. Unit one, exercise three, saying hello and goodbye. Part A. Listen to people saying hello and goodbye. Listen twice. Hi, Tony. How are you? Great. How about you, Susan? See you later, Tony. Bye, bye, Susan. Good morning, sir. How are you? I'm just fine, Tina. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Tupper. How are you? Not bad, thanks. And how are you, Miss Taylor? Goodbye. Have a nice day. Bye bye. See you tomorrow. Bye. Have a nice evening. Thanks. You too. Unit two, talking about jobs and routines. Exercise one, a student's routine. Part A, listen to a student talk about his routines. I usually follow the same routine on college days. I get up early in the morning at six o'clock. I study for some time and then I get dressed. I always reach college on time. In the afternoon, I almost always go out with friends to play cricket or basketball. I often study in the evening, but I never miss my favorite TV programs. I usually go to bed before ten o'clock. I love weekends. I always get up late in the morning and then I have a big breakfast. I usually watch TV in the afternoon. Sometimes I go out with friends either to play or just roam around. I often go to bed late. My family always goes on long holidays. We visit different places. We usually stay in hotels, but in the places where we have relatives, we stay with them. We never travel by air; we travel by road. It's fun. Unit two, exercise two, busy days, part A. Listen to people talking about their busiest days. Listen three times. My busiest day is Sunday. All our relatives come to our house for lunch and dinner almost every Sunday. I hate Mondays. I get up before five o'clock. I catch the bus at six. I start work at seven and finish around four in the afternoon. Then I have a two-hour computer class. After that, I give a private tuition class to some children in the neighborhood. It's usually nine o'clock when I arrive home. Saturday is my busiest day. I always clean the house in the morning. I usually do the shopping in the afternoon. In the evening, I work as a teacher in an adult education class. The class finishes at ten. Unit two, exercise three, on a day off. Part A, listen to a conversation. What do you usually do on your day off, Steve? Oh, I always get up very early, around five o'clock, and I run for an hour. Wow, that sounds interesting. What do you do next? Then I usually go to the gym and lift weights for about an hour and swim for half an hour. My goodness, you really are a fitness freak. I guess so. After all that exercise, I come home and have a big breakfast. What about you, Susan? Well, on my day off, I just watch TV all day. Now you are a real couch potato. Unit two. Exercise four. What do you do? Part A. Listen to a conversation. Listen at least three times. 
Then practice the conversation with a partner. What do you do, Laxman? I work with a travel agency. Sounds good. What do you do exactly? I'm a tourist guide. I take people on tours to different parts of the country. So you get to travel a lot, don't you? Yes. Sometimes I even go out of the country to places like Tibet and Sikkim. Wow, you really have a great job. Yes, I love my job. What about you, Rosie? What do you do? I work in a hospital. Really? Are you a nurse? No, I'm a brain surgeon. I perform more than a dozen operations every week. I have to work long hours, and I hardly get any holidays. So, how do you like your job? Not bad, but I can't give much time to my family. Unit two, exercise five. What about the family? Part A. Listen to a conversation. Listen at least three times. What do you do, Sarita? I'm a teacher. Really? Tell me about your family. Well, I'm married and I have three children. What does your husband do? He has a small business. Well, that's interesting. What business does he have? He has a small garment factory. He exports all the products. What about your children? Do they all go to school? No, only two of them go to school. The youngest one is just five months old. You have a small and beautiful family. Yes, it's a lovely family. And what about you? Are you married? No, I'm not. I'm still studying. I'm in my final year of MBA. Oh, great! By the way, do you have any brothers and sisters? Yes, I do. I have a brother and a sister. And what do they do? Well, my brother drives a taxi and my sister flies a plane. No kidding. Unit three, making requests and complaints. Exercise one, making requests. One, part A. Listen to some requests and their responses. Would you mind turning down the TV, Russian? I'm trying to study. Sure, I'll turn it down. Max, could you move your car, please? It's blocking my way. Uh, okay. I'll park it across the street. Would you mind not making so much noise? Sorry, I didn't know I was disturbing you. Please close the door on your way out. All right, I'll do it. Would you mind helping me to carry this table? Not at all. Excuse me, could you move your legs, please? Sorry, I didn't know it was bothering you. Can you help me in the kitchen? Sure, no problem. Can you lend me your camera for a day? Oh, I'm really sorry. I'm using it. Can I borrow your pen? Sure. Here you are. Unit three. Exercise two. Making requests. Two. Part A. Listen and learn how to make requests in several ways. Lend me fifty rupees, please. Please lend me fifty rupees. Can you lend me fifty rupees? Can I borrow fifty rupees? Can you lend me fifty rupees, please? Can I borrow fifty rupees, please? Could you please lend me fifty rupees? Would you mind lending me fifty rupees, please? Unit three, exercise two, making requests. Two, part B. Listen and learn several ways of accepting a request. All right. Okay, I'll do that. Okay, here you are. Sure, no problem. Oh, sure, I'd be glad to. Unit three, exercise two. Part C. Listen and learn several ways of refusing a request. Sorry, I don't have any money. I'm sorry, but I'm busy right now. I'd rather not. What? You must be kidding. Unit three. Exercise three. Complaints and apologies. Part A. Here are some of the ways people generally make apologies. Listen and learn. Simply apologize. I'm sorry I'm late. Apologize and explain. I'm sorry I missed the bus. Apologize and say you made a mistake. I'm sorry I woke up late today. Apologize and make a promise. I'm very sorry it won't happen again. Unit three, exercise three. Complaints and apologies, Part B. Listen to people making complaints and apologies. Pause the tape and repeat what they say. 
By the way, you haven't returned my camera. It's been really long. I'm really sorry. I'll give it to you tomorrow. I'm really upset with you. You didn't phone me yesterday. I'm extremely sorry. I was really busy. Don't forget, you still owe me a thousand rupees. Sorry, I haven't been able to manage it. I was waiting for you in the park, but you didn't turn up. Oh, I got there late, and you had already gone. I'm really sorry. You always leave the door open. Why don't you ever close it? I'm really sorry. From next time, I will. You're smoking in a no smoking area. Oh, I didn't notice a sign. I'll go outside. Unit four, expressing likes and dislikes. Exercise one, likes and dislikes. Part A. Listen to the conversations. Do you like folk music, Tina? No, I don't like it very much. Do you? Yes, I love it. Kumar Basnat is my favorite singer. What kind of music do you like? Well, I like pop music a lot. Really? Who's your favorite singer? Sugam Pokhrel. How about you? Do you like him? He's okay, but I'm fond of Nima Rumba. Do you like playing cricket, Max? Yes, I love it. What about you? Well, I don't like playing cricket, but I love watching it on TV. That's interesting. So, besides that, what do you like doing in your free time? Well, I'm fond of meeting new people. I also enjoy gardening and cooking. Cooking? I can't stand it. Unit four, exercise two, ways of expressing likes and dislikes, part A. Listen to people expressing their likes and dislikes about different things. I like Hindi films. I like watching horror films. I enjoy sports. I enjoy playing football. I'm fond of sweets. I'm fond of eating ice cream. I love books. I love reading novels. I'm crazy about music. I'm crazy about listening to pop music. I don't mind journeys. I don't mind traveling by bus. I don't like Thai food. I don't like eating in restaurants. I hate films. I hate sitting in the cinema hall for three hours. I can't stand Peter. I can't stand listening to his lies. Unit four, exercise four, others' actions, your reactions. Part A. Listen to some more expressions of likes and dislikes. It's time. Pause the tape and repeat the sentence. I like people giving me gifts. I don't mind guests coming to my house. I don't like friends asking for money. I hate dogs barking at me. Unit five, talking about home and neighborhood. Exercise one, talking about home and family. One. Part A. Listen to two people talking. Do you live in a flat? No, I don't. I live in a house. What's it like? Does it have a garden? Yes, it does, and it has a beautiful view. It's just next to the river. That sounds good. Do you live alone? No, I don't. I live with my parents and my sisters. How many sisters do you have? I have three sisters. That's a big family. Do you have a big house? Yes, we do. It has twelve rooms. Twelve rooms. How many bedrooms does it have? It has five bedrooms. Do you have your own bedroom? Yes, I do. In fact, everyone has their own bedroom. That's very nice. Unit five, exercise three, talking about neighborhood. One, part A. Listen to people telling a few things about their neighborhood. There's a big market. There's no swimming pool. There isn't a hospital. There are some restaurants. There are no hotels. There aren't any clubs. There's a lot of traffic. There's not much pollution. There's plenty of sightseeing. There are a lot of shops. There aren't many houses. There are plenty of clinics. Unit five, exercise four, talking about neighborhood. Two. Part A. Listen to a conversation. Whereabouts in Kathmandu do you live, Sham? I live in Charbil. 
Really? What's the neighbourhood like? It's good. It has many facilities, but there's a lot of traffic. Is there a market? Yes, there's a pretty big market. There are also a few department stores. Sounds good. Are there any restaurants and hotels? There are some restaurants, but they're not very good, and there aren't any hotels. What about sports and entertainment? Well, there are a couple of gyms, and there's a big cinema hall, but there's no swimming pool. I have to go all the way to Balaju every Saturday. Unit six, talking about locations. Exercise one, telling where things are. Part B, listen and practice this conversation. Where's my tie? I think it's in the wardrobe. No, it's not in there. Oh, it must be on the table. Let me see. No, it's not there either. Ah, yes, it's under the table. Unit six, exercise three. Asking for locations, Part A. Listen and practice the conversations at least twice. Excuse me, is there a hospital near here? No, there's no hospital here, but there's a doctor's clinic. It's in Rara Marg, just opposite the bank. Thank you. Oh, just one more thing. Where's the nearest payphone? Well, it's right over there, next to the hotel. Thanks a lot. Excuse me, are there any restaurants around here? Yes, there are. There's a good one on the corner of King Street and New Park Road. Thanks very much. Unit Seven, giving directions. Exercise One, practice with giving directions. Part A, listen and practice the conversations. Excuse me, could you tell me the way to the Balls Gym? Sure. Just go along this street and turn right on Carmel Street. Walk along Carmel Street, go past Third Street, and it's on the left. It's opposite the concert hall. Thanks. Excuse me, how can I get to the Bakery Cafe? Well, go up the street until you reach Carmel Street. Then turn left and walk for five minutes. It's on the corner of First Street and Carmel Street, next to the Metro Cinema Hall. Thanks a lot. Unit Eight, giving instructions. Exercise One, recipe instructions. Part A. Here are some common phrases that are used in recipes. Listen and practice. Peel the potatoes. Chop the onion. Cut the vegetables. Shell the peas. Beat the eggs. Knead the dough. Add some water. Add the spices. Add salt to taste. Mix the ingredients. Simmer the soup until it becomes thick. Stir gently. Fry until brown. Turn it over. Boil the vegetables. Bake a cake. Roast a chicken. Pour some oil. Heat it for some time. Let it cook for some time. Unit eight, exercise two, learning to cook, part A. Listen and practice the conversation. This soup is delicious. How do you make it? It's very simple. You need some fresh vegetables like cauliflower, carrots, and peas. You also need some flour. Okay, then. First, cut up the vegetables and shell the peas. Then boil some water. After that, put the vegetables in the water and let them boil for about two minutes. All right. What next? Next, add some flour and stir for some time. Then add salt to taste and simmer the soup until it becomes thick. Finally, chop up some onions and cut some coriander leaves and put them in the soup. Now the soup is ready to serve. That's it. Thanks for the recipe. Unit eight, exercise three, simple instructions, part A. Listen and practice the conversation. You've got a beautiful camera. Yes, I bought it only yesterday. Let me have a look. Ooh, it looks a bit technical. How do you operate it? It's not that difficult. First, press this red button to switch it on. Then look through the viewfinder. You can adjust the distance by pressing these zoom buttons. After you're ready, just click it here. Sounds simple. Yes, but be careful not to touch this slider. It's for rewinding the roll. Okay, and what about the flash? It has an auto flash system. Okay, ready? Say cheese. Unit nine, giving suggestions. Exercise one, ways of giving suggestions. Part A. There are several ways of giving suggestions. Study these examples, then listen and practice. 
to say that it's a good thing to do. You should take warm clothes. You ought to travel by plane. You'd better make reservations in advance. To say that it's not a good thing to do. You shouldn't go alone. You'd better not walk alone at night. To say that it is necessary to do. You have to get a visa. You must leave early to reach there before dark. To say that it is not necessary to do. You don't need to get a visa. Unit nine, exercise two, visiting a place. Part A. Listen and practice the conversation. I'm planning to go to Pokhara soon. Really? When are you planning to leave? Next week. Since you're from Pokhara, I thought you could give me some advice. It's my first trip to Pokhara, you know. Oh, okay. You should take some warm clothes. It's very cold in Pokhara at this time of year. And when you're in Pokhara, you should go boating. But you shouldn't do it alone. You ought to take an experienced boatman. Well, thanks a lot. And yes, one more thing. Since you're going there in the peak tourist season, you'd better book the hotel in advance. Sure, I remember that. Thanks once again. Unit ten, expressing abilities. Exercise one, good at, bad at. Part A, listen and practice the conversation. Who's your favourite cricket player? Anil Kumble. He's very good at bowling. Really, but he can't bat very well. In fact, he's terrible at batting. I like Andrew Flintoff. He's terrific at batting. He's pretty good at bowling too. Maybe true, but he doesn't always play very well. Besides, I don't like his fielding. He's not so good at it. Unit eleven, relating past events. Exercise one, where were you born? Part A, listen and practice the conversation. Could you tell me a little bit about yourself? Sure. What would you like to know? Well, where were you born? I was born in London, UK. Oh, did you grow up there? No, I grew up in Manchester. My family moved to Manchester when I was just a kid. And did you go to high school in Manchester? Yes, I did. Where did you go to college? I went to college in Ontario, Canada. What did you major in? I majored in journalism. Oh, really? And when did you finish college? In the year two thousand. Then I returned to London and started working for a magazine. I'm still there. Unit eleven. Exercise two. Have you ever? Part A. Listen and practice the conversations. Have you ever eaten Japanese food? No, I've never eaten Japanese food. Have you? Yes, I have. I had sashimi when I was in Tokyo last year. It's a dish of raw fish. Did you like it? Oh yes, it was delicious. Have you ever met a famous person? Yes, I have. In fact, I met Rajesh Hamal just a week ago. Oh, where did you meet him? In a restaurant in Tamil. Actually, I was having lunch there with my family, and everybody was looking at the table behind us. When I turned around to see, there he was. Wow! Did you talk to him? Yes. In fact, he came to our table and talked to us. He somehow knew my father. I asked him for his autograph too. Would you like to see it? Unit eleven. Exercise three. How was your weekend? Part A. Listen and practice the conversations. How was your weekend? It was great. I went to a concert with my friends. What did you do at the weekend? My family and I went to see a film. We saw Anacondas. It was terrific. What did you do on Saturday? I went out with my friends. We had lunch at a restaurant. Then we went shopping. How was your weekend? Oh, not very exciting. I just stayed at home and watched TV. I also worked around the house for some time. Unit eleven, exercise four, talking about a trip. Part A, listen and practice the conversation. Hi Mike, how was your trip to Gorka? It was wonderful. I really enjoyed it. How long were you there? I was there for three days. What did you do there? Well, I visited the Gorka Durbar. It was really fantastic. Then I went trekking down to the Daraldi River. Finally, I went to Manakamna Temple by cable car. It was a great experience. Did you like the food there? Yes, I did. I mostly had the local food, dal bat takari. It was good, but I didn't like the pickle they served. It was very hot and had a pungent smell. Were the hotels any good? Yes, the hotel I stayed in was very comfortable, and it also had a great view. By the way, do you want to see my photos? Sure. Unit eleven. 
Unit 12. Talking about the future. Exercise 1. Learn some rules. Part A. We normally use will, be going to, and present continuous to express the future. Study these rules, then listen and practice. We use will when we decide to do something at the time of speaking. Let's have a party. That's a great idea. We'll invite lots of friends. We use be going to when we have already decided to do something. Tom and I have decided to have a party. We're going to invite lots of friends. Oh, really? Present continuous can also have a future meaning. We use the present continuous to say what we have already arranged to do. What are you doing tomorrow? I'm leaving for Pokhara tomorrow. I've bought my tickets. Unit 12. Exercise 2. What are you doing? Part A. Listen and practice the conversations. What are you doing tomorrow? I don't have any plans as such. I think I'll just stay at home and watch TV. Do you have any plans for next Saturday? Yes, I'm going to do some shopping. What about you? Well, I think I have to join you. I need to do some shopping myself. I'm throwing a housewarming party tomorrow and you're invited. Thanks. I'll be there. So, Susan, what are you doing this evening? Would you like to go out? Oh, sorry, I can't. I'm attending a party. Sheila has invited me. Well, how about tomorrow evening? Are you doing anything then? No, I'm not. What are you planning to do? I'm going to see a musical show. Would you like to come? Sure, I'd love to. What time is the show? It's at 6 o'clock. I'll come to pick you up at 5.30. Thanks. See you then.